Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the only ultra-rapid acting inhaled insulin by Dexcom, keeping you in control with an integrated system for diabetes management, and by Athletic Greens. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, explaining your diabetes to your child. When you're a parent with diabetes, your kids often learn about it before they can read or write. They know you might beep or take shots or wear a CGM, and they often become diabetes helpers in serious circumstances. And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm having a hypo and I don't have the ability to communicate where my glucagon kit is or anything like that. So I muster up, I get out of a 40 low and and trending Mm -hmm. down and I give myself glucagon and then I'm out. I pass out, I wake up, I'm cold, shivering. From that experience, I realized I have to have a code word that my daughter can understand. That's Dr. Phyllis DeRose. We talk about how she taught her daughter that code word and what it is. There's quite the story there. And why she wrote a new book, Diabetes Helpers. Dr. DeRose also has a harrowing story of her doctor who refused to give her the diabetes technology she needed. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. I am your host, Stacey Sims, and I am always so glad to have you here. You know we aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. As this episode goes live, it is Valentine's Day, and I thought this would make a nice episode for a day about love and those who support us. And while in my local groups, we're often thinking about parents supporting kids, this is really a conversation about kids supporting their parents. I need to say before we get into everything, my voice is a little weird today. I think it's allergy season already here in Charlotte. It is the middle of February. Give me a break. I also should let you know, have I mentioned this before? I have some really weird fruit allergies. Uh, Since my 20s, I've been allergic to apples and plums and pears and peaches, like stone fruit, but a little bit more than that. And it's tied to a pollen allergy I have. So I started taking allergy shots for the first time in the summer of last year. I thought all this time that food allergies were something you really couldn't treat with these kinds of shots, but this is a very specific type of food allergy. It's a long story and I'm already off topic here enough, but a friend of mine had a child with very similar allergies and they were able to treat them with this kind of standard therapy, which I'm also hoping treats my seasonal allergies, but I'm only halfway through the regimen. So I should have a lighter allergy season, they're telling me, but probably not not what it'll be next year, hopefully. All of that to say, if my voice sounds a little bit rough, that's what I think is going on. And I got to tell you, if I get to eat an apple in this next year, if this really works, oh, I'm going to throw a party. I miss apples. I miss peaches and plums too, but I grew up in New York State and I had, I had birthday parties as apple picking parties right at orchards. <laughs> I miss apples. Okay. My guest this week is Dr. Felicit DeRose. She is a global diabetes patient advocate. She began blogging at diagnosednotdefeated.com after she was diagnosed in 2011. She was initially misdiagnosed with type 2. She has LADA, latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, often called type 1.5. She's the founder of Black Diabetic Info. She came on the show a little bit more than a year ago to talk about a book about diabetes in media specifically to talk about her chapter, which was all about how diabetes had been misrepresented in sitcoms and comedies focusing on Black families. Now, she and her daughter have written a children's book for kids who help their loved ones with diabetes. Diabetes Helpers also combines conversations about three different types of diabetes into one book. Of course, I will link all the information up about where you can buy the book. But if you're in the D.C. area, she's got some book signings and appearances coming up this month. So I will link that up as well. It's pretty unique and I'm excited to talk about it. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Afreza. And I know you have a lot of questions about Afreza because every time I talk about it, I get emails and messages. So what is it all about? Well, Afreza is an ultra rapid acting mealtime insulin. You breathe it in using an oral inhaler. Afreza gives you the flexibility to eat when you want while providing proven blood sugar control. Afreza's ultra-rapid action allows you to inhale your insulin right when food arrives, even unexpectedly, 
So you can be spontaneous, but still in control without the need for injections at mealtime. Find out more and see if Afrezza is right for you. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Afrezza logo. Afrezza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium, and is not for patients with chronic lung disease such as asthma or COPD or for patients allergic to insulin. Tell your doctor if you ever smoked, ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afrezza. Afrezza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning, medication guide, and instructions for use on afrezza.com slash safety. Dr. Felicita Rose, thank you so much for coming back on Diabetes Connections. It's great to talk to you again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about this because we talk about a lot of books, and I have read many, many years ago, many books, but this is the first book that I've come across that is is not for children with diabetes. It's for children with diabetes in their lives. Can you talk a little bit about what Diabetes Helpers is? Yes. So I want to first start off by saying that the idea came to me in 2018 when my daughter, I saw her pick up my Libre reader and put it across her arm as if she was scanning her blood sugar, looked at it as if there was a number on there and then smiled like, oh, it's good. (laughs) At the time, she must have been about three. And I thought like, wow, she is watching my every single move and she's growing up right alongside diabetes with me. And at that time, I thought like, how do I explain this to her? Around four or five, she started asking questions and I started looking for books that would help me as a person living with diabetes explain to my child. And I couldn't find anything. And I knew that there was a gap in our spaces in terms of diabetes children's book when you put that in Google or you go on Amazon or wherever you find books, the child has diabetes, but there's nothing that teaches children about diabetes when their loved one has diabetes. Yeah. And so Jelana is my diabetes helper. And that's where the title comes from, Diabetes Helpers. And it provides just the thing that I needed (laughs) and still need, um, a way to talk about diabetes in a child-friendly way. Wow. What real life stories made their way into the book? I want to talk about this one from a friend. I'll get to mine next, (laughs) but I was talking to a friend about how Jelana gets me juice and makes sure that I have candy in my purse and she can't eat my candy, which I prefer pink Starburst. That's my my candy. (laughs) Love it. And she said to me, I remember having to do those things for my grandfather. She grew up right alongside diabetes, watching her grandfather. And when she said that, I thought like, wow, there were older women in my church when I was young that we would find sucking on peppermint candies because that was approved in the the church we went to. (laughs) And it opened my eyes to making sure that this book wasn't just my story about me and my daughter, but that it represents other people. So the three characters, Jelana, Grace, and Antonio, each of them are helpers to different family members. So Jelana is a helper to her mom, me. Grace is a helper to her brother. At Friends for Life, I met a lot of kids who were the siblings of someone who have been diagnosed. And then Antonio, he helps his grandfather with diabetes. So I wanted to have an array of relationships shown in here. Yeah. Over the years, I've talked to a lot of parents who live with diabetes, and they, have, they all have stories about their kids helping them. But they also have stories about having to explain to their children at a very young age about lows and about more serious issues. You know, how do you recommend talking to your kids about that kind of stuff? Well, I would say have a kit. So this is this is what we have in our house. And it comes from me having a very severe hypo last December around the holidays. 
And the holidays is important because I'm going to tell you what our code word is. It deals with holidays. And at the time we had moved and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm having a hypo and I don't have the ability to communicate where my glucagon kit is or anything like that. So I muster up, I get out of a 40 low and and trending Mm -hmm. down and I give myself glucagon and then I'm out. I pass out, I wake up, I'm cold, shivering. From that experience, I realized I have to have a code word that my daughter can understand. Before so she- we go further, Felissa, when you say you gave yourself glucagon, was this was it the injection? Was it the nasal this spray? Was, this was nasal spray. Okay. I mean, it's scary nonetheless, but I'm just trying to figure out, gosh, you know, you're, you're doing this yourself. How difficult that must be. Yeah, it was the the nasal spray. And I have to say, unwrapping the paper on the nasal spray, like, I don't think people understand when your blood sugar is low, you have no dextremity usage. Like, you cannot open that. Um, I definitely felt like I was not going to make it um, Mm -hmm. because my daughter would never, never have found it. My husband would not have found it. We had moved. My insulin to pump ratio had just been changed by my endo. And I didn't eat all of my dinner. So I forgot about the extra insulin from the (laughs) insulin car ratio change. And I didn't eat all of my dinner. So I Mm -hmm. just had way too much insulin coming in fast. So I I squeezed it up my nose. I scream out because it burns. And then I, that's all I remember of that night. And then eventually waking up on the floor, very, very, very cold. So I realized we have to have a code word. I go to the local Dollar Tree and I pick up this canister that has a reindeer on it. I was still groggy that next day. So I tell my daughter, Jelana, if mommy ever says red reindeer, bring me this. (laughs) And so that's our code word. Now I look at it, it's hilarious because the reindeer is not red. Like it just shows that I was out of it. (laughs) The reindeer is golden, the box is red. You know, it's just, (laughs) <laughs> that makes but it better though. Beer <laughs> works. So in that box, I have my favorite Starburst. Like I said, so I have Starburst for if it's like, you know, moderately low, but I also have Bexemi in there. I also have Glucagon gel in there because it's easier to swallow than the than those um mm. chalky chews things. I tablets, I don't like those. So I feel like I can just squeeze the gel down. So I have like this kit and it's in a place in our house that she has access to. And every now and again, I'll just say red reindeer and she runs and she gets it. Like she knows you have to stop whatever you're doing, run and go get this and bring this to me. So you've said this kind of as a test to check it out. Yes. Great. And fortunately she's not here while I'm doing this because even if she hears me talking (laughs) and I say red reindeer, (laughs) She'll go get it. So I'm telling people, oh, I have this code with my daughter, Red Reindeer, you know, and the next thing I know, she's like, mommy, here. And I'm like, no, I don't need it now. So she completely understands what an emergency case is like and that she has to be ready for these things. Just go get me a juice. She knows that it's a little thing. Whenever my my area in the refrigerator is low on apple juice or any kind of juice. She's particular orange juice. I mean, apple juice only. For me, I'm, I don't care. She'll say, you're out of juice. You have to get more. So that's part of, you know, her learning about hypos is that they must be treated now and that I'm going to be okay in about 15 minutes. So I don't want her to worry um, so I just say, okay, give me juice. And in 15 minutes, mommy will be right back to normal. And that works for us at this age of seven. I'm not sure how to ask this question. So I'll fumble around until I get it. I'm trying to think, you know, when you have a child who is, you know, helping mom in that kind of situation, how do you balance the responsibility that you're putting on her with not wanting her to carry too much weight for that age? You know, there's, there's so much feelings and guilt wrapped up for people with diabetes. You know, mm-hmm. how do you keep that? And listen, I don't have any answers. I struggle in my family. You know, my daughter, we talked about her as being a helper, you know, when Benny first was diagnosed and she was five. But I didn't want to put too much responsibility on her either mm-hmm. at that age. Yeah, I have to say that I am the child of 
a mother who had severe allergies Mm. and asthma. So that meant she had to carry an EpiPen at all times. And she had to teach us like, this is the EpiPen. This is in my purse. If I ever have an allergic reaction or ask you to get it, she didn't have the red reindeer code, but we knew that something could happen to our mom and she would need help. And we're here to help because I didn't feel that it was a burden. It was more like, this is what it is. Like my mom has severe allergies. We've had to call 911 numerous times for anaphylactic shock. As a child, I remember being most concerned about was when the ambulance took my mom away. Mm. That was when I thought like, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen? But as long as she was in the house and things were okay, I was to an extent okay. So that's why when I talked to Jelana about my hypos, I let her know, mommy will be fine in 15 minutes. I'm going to come out of this. Just give me a moment. Thank you so much. You did great. And that's pretty much the end of the help, right? At seven, I don't get into blood sugar trending high and trending low (laughs) (laughs) and those kinds of things. That's my balance. My balance is she has this kind of one task, juice or red reindeer in an emergency. And then other than that, I'm okay. So the last time you were here on Diabetes Connections, we were talking about Dr. Heather Walker's book, Undoing Diabetes, Representation, Disability, Culture, and the chapter that you had contributed to that book. You have written many things. Did you feel a lot of pressure writing this this kind of book, you know, writing a children's book when you're, you know, you're very academic, uh, you know, you've got all this great stuff to say? What was it like to kind of turn that over and write a children's book? I have to say it was so much fun. Huh. It was a joy. It was also frustrating at times because I relied on the illustrator, right? Like Mm. you can have a great story, but your illustrator must bring things to life. And it took a while to find the right person that understood diabetes. So I reached out to about 10 illustrators and I gave them all the same prompt. Here's what I'm writing. There are three characters. They are children. They are diabetes helpers. And Stacy, I have to say, to get those images back, to see what comes to mind, like mm-hmm. visually for some people when they hear diabetes, oh my gosh. there was blood drops. There was like a pancreas bleeding. <laughs> there were needles everywhere. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, no, like. It's a children's book. (laughs) So, yeah, that was eye-opening for me. Because like I said, they all got the same prom. That's very funny. But what came back was wildly different. And even the illustrator that I chose, he and I went back and forth with some images. Like, for example, there's Grandpa giving himself an injection at night. At some point in the process... He, the, it looked like he was giving himself an injection through the blanket. And I was Ooh. like, no, kind of not through the blanket. <laughs> and yeah. then I wanted to make sure that the CGM um, scene in the book was circular because I know the G7 was coming out and I didn't want it to look like the G6 and be outdated. So that was important in there. And to have the pump be present in some pictures, but not all, because sometimes we show the pump, sometimes we cover up. I wanted people with all types of diabetes to really feel seen in here. But something, at some point in the process of finishing the book, something eye-opening happened where Jelana and I were watching television together. There was a cartoon movie that came out last year, and it's about a sumo wrestler slash cat, animal, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, he's obese and he doesn't want to be a samurai anymore or he forgot that he was a samurai. And there is this line in here where they say to the to the cat samurai, you're fat and you're lazy 
and you're on your way to get pre-diabetes. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh my goodness. Like here I am putting my efforts into writing the stigma-free children's book about diabetes and my daughter is getting these messages at yeah. seven. So in terms of my writing in Heather's book, I was only focused on adult media in that chapter because I think as an adult, I've mainly watched adult movies and films, but that was so eye-opening for the messages that children are getting. Yeah. And it made me understand that my book is even more valuable in that way because if our children are getting those messages at such a young age, then something like reading Diabetes Helpers that's colorful and friendly, it provides a different narrative. And we we need those. I didn't know we needed those at like, you know, seven and cartoons. But I realized, yeah, we do need those. Oh, it's amazing. Um, I wrote a piece for Medscape about um, turning red last mm-hmm. year. And I did a little bit of research into other mentions of diabetes in kids media because it was, it was pictured, but not mentioned in Turning Red. And it was amazing. It was amazing. And uh, thankfully, uh, some of it gets removed. People do complain. We're better educated. We see it happen. And we know to speak up now. But it's amazing that it happens in the first place still. And it's almost always that blame and shame. You did this to yourself. You're a terrible person. You're fat. You're ugly. You ate too much. And you have diabetes. It's, it's unbelievably lazy. And it happens all the time. When I was newly diagnosed, I was flooded with all these horrible things about people with diabetes that I didn't even realize I carried. And I thought, where did I get this from? Yeah. You've shared before many times that you were initially misdiagnosed, you know, told you had type 2 and you did not. But I, I know you have an experience also of really not getting the diabetes technology that you needed. And did you tell me this has something to do with your daughter's name, which is such a beautiful name, but can you tell us a little bit more about that whole story? Right back to our conversation, but first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dexcom. So Benny was away last weekend, and it was funny to think about, you know, I would see his blood sugar, of course, on my phone because we have share and follow with the Dexcom. And I was just thinking about how different it was, you know, from back in the day when we had blood sugar checks on a timer for him. We would check. I mean, we're talking about doing finger sticks, right? The same time every day at home and at school and whenever extra we needed to. And it really is amazing to think about how much our diabetes management has changed with share and follow. I didn't even have to text him because, you know, we're at a point he's had diabetes for 16 years. We have a whole system where I basically stay out of his way now, but I can still decide whether to check in on him and whether to reach out because using share and follow has really helped us talk less about diabetes. I got to say, I never thought that would happen. (laughs) I think for the caregiver or the spouse or the friend, You can help the person with diabetes manage in the way that works for your individual situation, and Dexcom gives you that flexibility. Internet connectivity is required to access Dexcom Follow. Separate follow app required. Learn more at diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. Now back to Felissa talking about her daughter. Yes, so my daughter's name is Jelana. And it is from a Swahili name, Jelani, that is a male's name. And when I was pregnant, I did not want to know the sex of my child. I just felt like society puts all these gender pressures on people. And this is the one time that I get to love a soul for a soul. Hmm. So I didn't know if it was a girl or a boy. Wow. And I had very, very, very low hypos. I had a lot of them during my pregnancy. It was really scary. And I found out that the Freestyle Libre was available, but my endo had never shared that information with me. I learned about the Freestyle Libre on social media from my diet buddies, from the DOC. And after my daughter was born, I asked my endo, hey, like the Libre had been available. Like, Why did you never mention it? And they told me it's because they thought I could not afford it. Wow. And my daughter's name is Jelana because while I was pregnant, many of those hypos, I only knew that I was having them 
because she was fiercely kicking in my stomach and would wake me up. And she, in essence, was saving both of our lives. And I wanted to make sure that her name honored that. So Jalani, the Swahili name, means one whom God gives strength to. And so her name is the feminized version of that one whom God gives strength to. I love that story. But I have to ask you, as someone who, I don't want to say talks back to, but as someone who has in-depth conversations with physicians when I am unhappy with situations, what did you say to that doctor who said to your face, I don't think you could afford this? Oh, Stacey, I was floored. I, <laughs> I, I was so shocked. Like, I'm one of those people that I can be shocked. I, 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 I was speechless, I have to say. I could not fathom that that was going to be the answer. That literally someone would tell me they didn't think that I could afford it. One, I'm just going to say, personally, I assume anyone that's a doctor of anything can afford $80 a month. Now, that's just my own. Well, and even you can almost understand if the doctor said something like, well, we know you have this kind of insurance and this kind of insurance generally doesn't cover it. Or something like that, right? If they tried to weasel out of it that way. But to just say like, hey, we thought you didn't have the money. No. Yeah, that's what it was. So the next thing is, I also think a woman who is pregnant and definitely wants her child would do anything to get $80 a month (laughs) to like survive her pregnancy, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking, even if you thought I didn't have it, but you actually thought... I didn't have access to it. Like that just took it to a whole nother level. It's one thing to say you don't have the funds, but it's another thing to say, and I'm also assuming you don't have access to the funds. Yeah, I I don't think I said anything. Say I I was just speechless. I couldn't believe it. I might have said, Really? I don't know. Yeah. No, I hey, listen, it's not your job to fix him. No. What does Jelana think of the book now? She loves the book. And I have to say, the very early sketches of this book was stick figures, ah. um, hand drawn, <laughs> hand drawing. And she did not like it. Like she couldn't see my vision. Right. And um, along the way, the images got better and better. And now that it's complete and she sees the whole thing, she really likes it. We went to her class. And she read it to her class. That was so much fun because they had great questions for me about my insulin pump. And a few kids had someone in their family with diabetes. And I felt as though they walked away feeling better about that. Like they could openly say, you know, my XYZ family member does have diabetes. And I want to share that the ending of the book is actually a coloring book. So there are pages in the back that children can color. And I wanted to add an interactive element to it. So her classmates got to got to color as well after we read the book. And I should have pointed out or asked in the beginning, this is not a book that really looks at type, right? This is not something where you're, it's not called type one or type two diabetes helpers. It's diabetes. And that is correct. It was very important for me that the book has someone with LATA, type 2 and type 1, because the emphasis is on the children who are helping their relatives with whatever type of diabetes. And I have to say, when I started Black Diabetic Info and my blog, I didn't really focus on type. And Here is something that is so funny. I was going to do my very first type two something project. And that's when I found out I was misdiagnosed. So I was just like, the moment I decide to do something and label it type two, I find out that I I don't have uh, type two. So that is just a reminder for me to stay on my path of really focusing on uniting all people with diabetes and not be type specific. So it isn't type specific, but everyone with LATA type one and type two will definitely see themselves represented here. If you're on a pump, you're represented. If you have a CGM, you're represented. So high tech, low tech, 
medium tech. I also wanted that to be important. So the grandfather doesn't have a CGM. He has a BGM. So that is a discussion. And I have a pump in the book, but Grace's brother, he doesn't have a pump. He does MDI. So I wanted it to be diverse in all of the ways that I could uh, make it diverse and inclusive. That's great. What are you up to these days? Tell us what, you know, where we can find you and what you're doing. So you can find me most active on Instagram. I am at Black Diabetic Info there. And right now, I am most involved in a project at work called Doing Diabetes Your Way. You can also go to doingdiabetesyourway.com and see these videos that we've released where I'm talking about how I'm doing diabetes my way and inspiring people to do it their way. This project is important because I don't know if that's the case for a lot of people, but definitely for me, when I was newly diagnosed, I thought there was just one way to manage diabetes. I had to eat this way. I had to exercise that way. And and over the years, I realized that's very constraining. And so the early messaging people should have is that you can manage it your way. Like you don't have to dull down your personality. I'm spontaneous. I thought I couldn't be spontaneous and manage diabetes. Yes, diabetes likes routines. And so we fight often, but you can fight. (laughs) 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 That's your choice, right? Like you can fight. You don't have to live by someone else's rule book. So that's what I'm most doing now is this project that work at DQ&A doing diabetes your way. I'm, I'm really excited about that. That's great. Well, I'm so glad you wrote this book. I'm thrilled for you. I know you're going to be out and about doing some book signings, and we'll link all of that up in the show notes so people can find you and find Diabetes Helpers. Please say thank you to your daughter as well, and congratulations to her. It's lovely being a published author before you're out of elementary school, I bet. <laughs> That's a, that is so great. Felissa, thank you so much for spending so much time with me and coming back on the show. This is great. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure yet again. I greatly appreciate it. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. I will link up more information about Diabetes Helpers, about Black Diabetic Info, and about Dr. DeRose, where you can meet her and read her other publications, all at diabetes-connections.com. Those show notes should appear wherever you are listening, you know, Apple or Spotify or whatever. But if you can't see them or you can't click on the links for some reason, just head on back to the episode homepage. We have kind of a milestone event for a family friend coming up. And I want to talk about the, the Diabetes Connection there in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about Athletic Greens, one of our newer sponsors around here. And something I really enjoy. And guess what? So do my kids. I gave AG1 by Athletic Greens a try because I was looking for something that, you know, wasn't pills or vitamins, a supplement that actually tastes great. With just one scoop, I get the nutrients and gut health support that helps my whole body thrive and covers all those nutritional bases. I really prefer it in a smoothie. My kids like it that way too. I have mixed it with the vanilla smoothie that I drink a lot. Slade has had it. My husband has had it just in water. It's fine that way. I like it better in a smoothie. But however you drink it, it's all your key health products like multivitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more working together as one. If you want to take ownership of your health, today is a great time to start. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Stacy. That's athleticgreens.com slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Big Thank you to Athletic Greens for their help with Mom's Night Out. They were our breakfast sponsor. I so appreciate it. They're supporting the diabetes community, and we thank them for that. Please check it out. When Benny was about five years old, so my goodness, a long time ago now, right? Like 13 years ago, we got a call from one of our neighbors who knew that Benny had type 1. And her daughter had just been diagnosed and could they stop by and, you know, have a conversation and all the things you do. I'm sure many of you have been through this, you know, when you have somebody in your community that you know is going through this. So Christina and Jackie came over. Jackie is the mom, Christina, the daughter. And Christina was just graduating college. I think she had just graduated and had just been diagnosed. And of course, they were devastated. 
And Benny, who again was five, took Christina by the hand and said, you're going to be okay. And like led her to a different part of the house so they could have their own private conversation about what it was like to live with type one. And so the moms, so me and Jackie could talk. And from that day forward, we were were so lucky to have them as neighbors. Uh, Unfortunately, her adult son was also diagnosed shortly after that. But boy, they've just been such a big part of our lives. If you read my first book, The World's Worst Diabetes Mom, Jackie is in there because she used to babysit the kids a lot. You know, I used to go to work. I used to leave for work at 3.30 in the morning. And sometimes we would hire sitters, if Slade wasn't around, to sleep at the house. So they would be there. But Jackie would just walk down the street and kind of relieve me as I was leaving. She would walk in. And then Christina became a babysitter for us. And just great, great people. And I'm telling you all of this because Christina's getting married. And we're all going. And, you know, my family doesn't spend as much time together as we used to. Obviously, with the, you got a kid in college, that's just not going to happen. And then our summers are always so busy with Benny away most of the summer. I don't know where Leah's going to be. I'm just so excited that we're all going to be together to celebrate this really beautiful event of somebody that, you know, we've known for so long and has been such a big part of our lives with diabetes. When I announced my mom's night out event, Christina signed Jackie up like in a hot minute. It was great. And and it was really fun to see her there. I think it shows that being a mom of a kid with type 1, sure, it's different if your kid is diagnosed at 2 than at 22, but you're still a mom of a child with type 1, even if it's an adult child. So all of that to say, Christina and David, I cannot wait to celebrate you. And as you listen, I'll, I'll share some photos in the Facebook group or on social media. I know that's not really diabetes news or diabetes tech news. But I really wanted to include it because, you know, a big part of our lives with diabetes are the people and the communities that we make uh, full of other people with diabetes. And boy, this family has really just been a big part of our story. All right. Thank you, as always, to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you for listening. We do have a newscast coming up this Friday. This is the week that Dexcom is supposed to be released in the U.S. I will have more to say on that this Friday during In the News and any other stories and headlines that are happening in the diabetes community. I'm Stacey Sims. And until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged. <laughs>